to you today. I know some of us are talking about chilly weather, and I'm really cold here in St. Catharines, Ontario, and a few people have talked about being a little warmer. So, again, thank you and welcome for coming this morning. I want to talk about our show today. The topic is Easy Bib, and our special guests today are Darshan Somsicker, and I probably said that incorrectly, and Neil Tapper. Uh, and I know both Neil and Darshan are going to correct me in a few minutes, but welcome and thank you very much for coming today. We're really excited to have uh, Tammy Moore in uh, the chat room if anyone needs closed captioning. Tammy is doing that as she does always wonderfully every Saturday morning. And Lori Moffat's in the chat as well, being she's our backup. And again, we thank you very much for being with us today, Lori. Um, I see there was a few new people today, so I'm going to take uh, a quick tour of uh, Blackboard Collaborate. If you've seen that, you know, go grab a cup of coffee and we'll be finished this in just a few minutes. So. Those people who are near, uh, excuse me, new, I just want to look at the interface and how it works. There are panels down this side and each one of those panels is uh, separate and in the middle is your whiteboard. The top one, as you can see, is audio video. If you haven't done this yet and you're having trouble hearing, please run the audio setup wizard. I'll talk about that in a second, too. Participants window, you see everybody here lined up, and I know most of you figured out how to chat in the chat room. Whiteboard's going to have a poll function in a few minutes, so I'll show you how to use that as well. All right, we're going to talk about the participants window and the fun that you can have with this. Right over here in the participants window, this little smiley face, here it is blown up. You can see all the functions that you can click on and, and uh, show us you're either happy or sad or need some help. In a little bit farther, we have a voting window. It says hand, excuse me, I'm ahead of myself. We have raise your hand. If you want to come to the mic, you click on that raise your hand and you'll get a number besides your name. And either if you have a USB headset, you'll be welcome to come to the to the microphone and uh, ask your questions to other presenters or uh, add some interesting content to our show. If you don't have that um, USB headset, just type in the chat, but we'll come to your um, your questions as soon as we can. And Kim will be fielding uh, questions during the show, and I'm sure that Neil and Darshan will answer as they see, but we do collect all your questions and try and catch up and get them answered at the end of the show. Just for an FYI, uh, depending on how, how the show goes, if we do go over um, Neil and Darshan with their um, respect for their schedules, we'll stay on if you have any more questions. Fun time is using the poll function, the last little icon here for yes or no when I ask you some poll questions so we can wake you up in a, in a few minutes. I want to move the, any of these panels around. First I said that you could diminish, or maybe I didn't. The little uh, arrow at the top of the audio video window, if you click on that, this will all shrink up and you give a little bit more real estate to play with. The chat window goes by very quickly, so if you grab onto the title and drag it over to wherever you want on the page and let go, it will um, position itself. You can expand it by pulling the side or uh, lengthening it by pulling the, the little bar at the end of the panel down. Chat function. You'll see the conversation has been flying by um, back and forth, and that's because it usually says room. If you had a, a private conversation, and some of you may, may do that, you right click on the name and uh, look for their name in the list, uh, recognize that we, the uh, moderators, see all the conversations. But once you've done that, you're going to get a new tab. Here I'm having a conversation with Peggy, and it will be on top of the other tab. Uh, that means that this is the live uh, conversation that we're having with the other participant. If uh, you're in the room or talking with two people at once, that would be pretty exciting, and you see a little white bubble come up, that means there's a message for you in that chat room. If you want to close, close out any of the tabs, simply there's a little uh, circle with a blue X and very doing this job. But anyway, click on that and they'll disappear. So that's a quick way to keep that chat going and talking back and forth. I'm going to be asking you to use the pointer in a minute. We're not using the text still, but we're just going to use the pointer. And that, remember, is at the side of your whiteboard. It's all blown up for you. We're going to ask you to click on that in a minute. Just a reminder, uh, we do have a website, live.classroom20.com, and 
if you have to leave or you want to go back and listen to the recording of the show, you're going to find it all on our archives and resources page. You'll get the uh, complete collaborate recording. We have MP4 uh, files so you can put it along on your iPod, recognizing we have an iTunes U channel, which Kim will talk about a little later in the show, and uh, an MP3 file. So that's a terrific resource for you to go back in and check the uh, resources that we've given you. Okay, our next thing is to have some fun and find out where you are in the world. So I need you to go to that whiteboard tool, that little starburst, click on it and drag it out over to where you're located in the world. I've got my hand showing, so I'm going to hear I'm in St. Catharines, Ontario. Peggy's in Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, right about there, and that's probably Peggy. And then Kim is in San Antonio, Texas, and I know, I think, I'm not sure where Neil and uh, Darshan are located right at the moment. I know they're on the eastern seaboard, but they're going to tell me the city they're located in. Within New York City, both of you? Uh, hello, right. Yep, we're both in New York. Great. So we're looking for everybody to click on the starburst and find yourself on the map. There we go. A few more people figuring out how to do that. Okay. We usually have a few people on this side of the world, but maybe they're not with us today or will join us shortly. Okay. Let's get started with the poll questions. And Kim, you're going to help me out with this. Um, our first question is, have you used EasyBib either personally or with your students? So green check if you haven't, red X if you haven't. Just waiting for folks to vote. And I'm going to publish the vote so you can see what the group is saying today. Most people have not used it, and quite a few people haven't figured out the voting part. I don't know whether you're just having your coffee and haven't come back, but um, our, our, I think our results are skewed a little bit here, but more people then have not seen it than, or not used it than, than do. Can we need to clear the votes? And I can't see where I'm supposed to clear the votes, but Kim, you probably in the background did it for me. Thank you. Question number two, have you used an, any other citation marker with your students? If yes, type in the chat. If yes, type in the chat. Or you can use the green X and there we go. Right now it looks like we got 50-50. Still having trouble with that voting process, but people are using the chat. Great, thank you very much. And there's our results. So right now it's 50-50. Our last poll question is a little bit um, harder to answer, but is manually creating citations still a relevant skill set? So here's where you have to put your thinking hat on yes or no, but you know what, it's really going to be a lead-in as to why our presenters are here, because I think most of us will know the answer. So let's just publish the votes. And a third of our group here today says it's not, a few more think it is, but maybe their minds are going to change after our guest has spoken today. One thing I wanted to talk about, which I haven't done yet, is the resources. I skipped over that part. Kim, are you able to drop in the link for the live binder for me? Right. When I talked about the archives and resources, I forgot to tell you um, about our Live Binder page, which is another very good way for you to access to all the links for the show. We have a, a tab for every presenter for the month, and we change it every month. So you should see a page loading up saying it's Classroom to the Zero Live, November 2011, with a lot of links across the page. And this is our Live Binder. So I can't do this for you, but if you clicked on any one of those tabs, it would take you to the resources that are going to be presented today by Neil and Darshan. So it's a really uh, good visual way to look at the, the resource instead of a link list. And that's why we really enjoy using it. Thank you very much, for Kim, for dropping that in. And we're going to start our presentation. So my computer has frozen, 
So someone else is going to need to advance the slide for me. Great. Um, back a couple. There we go. Oh, two back. There we go. Thank you very much. Um, very clear. My head's a little confused because things aren't working. Concentrate here. Our topic today is easy, Bib, and I know you're going to enjoy uh, learning about all these great resources. Our special guests today are Darshan Somashekar and Neil Taparia. Uh, there's a link to their website. And I'm going to ask uh, Neil and Darshan to uh, introduce themselves, and give us a little bit about their background, share where they've been, what they're doing. And when they finish with their introductions, if they wouldn't mind answering this newbie question, what is a citation marker and why would it be helpful to students in my classroom? So Darshan and Neil, the show is now you can take the microphones. You can take the microphones. Uh, so this is Darshan Somashaker. Uh, so this is Darshan Somashaker. Um, and to give a brief introduction of myself, I was, um, I'm from Chicago, um, along with Neil. He and I were neighbors uh, back in Chicago. Um, I went to school uh, up in Providence at Brown University. Um, after graduating, I worked at a consulting firm for two years, um, at which point um, Neil and I decided to do EasyBib full time, which that website was started back in 2001 while he and I were both um, in high school. And we'll give a little bit more background on EasyBib in a little bit. Hi guys, I'm Neil Taparia. I'm also from the Chicagoland area, like how Darshan was alluding to. I went to Northwestern University and graduated in 2006, after which I moved to New York City and worked in investment banking. And like we'll tell you about the history of EasyVib, I later left that job to run EasyVib full time because we had a bunch of educational ideas that we wanted to build out. And to answer the newbie question, a citation maker is a tool that helps students automatically format citations. Lorna, should we continue with the presentation and slides right now? Yeah, go right ahead. Thank you. OK, so like we were saying, we founded EasyBib back in 2001. Darshan and I were high school students at the time. And we understood the importance of citing information. But we were really frustrated with the rules that come with citing sources. You have to put periods in certain places. You have to italicize certain things. You have to know where the bibliographic data goes. And at the time, we were taking computer science classes and thought, hey, there's got to be a better way to create citations. So at that moment, we realized that we could create an internet service to expedite the whole process. And we created it and called it easybib.com. And we always created easybib to be as student friendly and intuitive as possible because we wanted to create a service for ourselves and our friends. And we think because of that design philosophy, EasyBib has enjoyed a lot of organic growth. Um, if you move on to the next slide, you'll see that we oftentimes like to compare EasyBib to a calculator. Just like with a calculator, you input um, math information and you get the result. Likewise, with EasyBib, you input bibliographic data, and then you get the citation. Um, so today, uh, EasyBib has grown from a website that we started back in 2001. Um, as every individual student has put in their bibliographies, we've collected their citations. And today we get, we have, actually we have over 400 million citations in our database today. Um, over 28 million students a year use our service. And during peak periods, um, like midterms or finals, we get over 750,000 new citations being added per day during those periods. Um, and if you Google us uh, and you type in words like bibliography, works cited, or citation, we come up as the number one Google result. We've also done a few partnerships. So for instance, um, as we'll demonstrate, one of the, the things we do on EasyBib is make it as simple as possible to build your citation. And so in the case of books, we allow students to type in their ISBN numbers or book titles. And when we do that, we query the worldcat.org database, which is uh, WorldCat is run by an organization called the OCLC, which has put together um, over 60 to 80 million bibli clean bibliographical records on books. And so when students are studying their books on EasyBib, they also get a chance to learn more about that book and see if that book was available at their library. And so to WorldCat, we've directed over 2 million visits. 
So today we find ourselves in a unique position. If you think about the way students research, they often start at Google and they'll access some of the first search results that come up on Google, like Wikipedia. And on the other side, you have great library resources that require login in. And so we find that EasyBib is both a library resource as well as a student resource at the same time. Just like just as students are using Google and Wikipedia, they're also coming to EasyBib to take care of their citation needs. So right now, given that we're both a library resource and a student resource, we're, bu we're building institutional services that make library resources more available. Here are a couple quotes that some librarians have said about EasyBib. And EasyBib is used really from K-12 students to students in their undergraduate education. And librarians from Harvard University even encourage their students to use EasyBib today. So right now, what we're going to do is show you how our service works and how we're continuing to evolve our service. Uh, so this is EasyBib, um, as you see, and this is what students see when they come uh, to our website, which is just www.easybib.com. And what we do is we want to uh, make it as simple as possible to start doing your bibliography. So you put some of the more popular sources that you can cite right up front in tab format. You can cite websites by just by putting in a URL. You can cite books by putting in an ISBN number or a book title, uh, newspapers, by newspaper title, uh, journals, by journal articles or DOI numbers, um, databases. And if these aren't some of the sources that you want to cite, we offer over 58 different kinds of sources that you can add to EasyBib. So everything like popular things like books and magazines, but also more esoteric sources like federal statutes, uh, paintings, pamphlets, and so on. So if you have any kind of source, we want to make sure that you feel comfortable adding that to your, <clears throat> to your bibliography. So to give you an example, um, we'll type in uh, a book title, like Catcher in the Rye. And, and so if you're citing Catcher in the Rye, you type in the title here, um, and you'd click Cite This. So what we do is we search WorldCat, where we pull back a number of related sources. So in this case, you look to see uh, which book that you're trying to cite, and you can look based on publisher or your published or author, and when you're ready to go, you click Select. And what we do is we take that information and put it into our form fields. Here you can take a look at your citation. You can make changes. You can see if, let's say you found the source online, you can put in the website information. If you found it from an online database, you can put in the database information. And if you're finding it from, let's say, a Kindle or these other new kinds of electronic mediums, you can always have that information here as well. But if all you want to do um, is create your, create your citation, you just click Create Citation. And we take that information and we make an automatically formatted uh, bibliography for you. So as you can see, all the periods and italici italicizations, et cetera, are in their proper place. And then you can keep going. So let's do a journal article uh, in this case. And we'll type in um, something like tigers. <laughs> click Cite This. And again, we search um, our journal database. You click on the, the source you're trying to cite. We'll fill out the information. Um, and let's say, for instance, your class, uh, you have to do annotations for your class. We offer a button that lets you add that annotation easily. And when you're finished, you create another citation. So we've just created two citations um, you know, within a couple minutes. So it makes it very straightforward for students to create their uh, bibliography. When we started EasyBib, we, we tried to do it from the student perspective. We want to make sure that citations are very accurate and we're also quick to create. But over time, one of the things that we realized um, is that um, students not only need to create their bibliographies quickly, they also should learn the process um, of citations and why being literate in terms of online information is important. So we've done a few things. And quickly, uh, Peggy had asked in the chat room if the annotation is private. No, it's, it's actually part of your bibliography. Um, so, we, so let me just jump back, and we'll show you some of the help tools that we've built in to teach students um, about citations and to help them along in the information.
information literacy process. Uh, the first piece is we call the source guide. Um, and so this often, um, if students, let's say, are citing online resources, they have trouble determining what they're trying to cite. So if they click help next to any source, we describe that source along with how you can cite that source and related sources. If you and we also show examples. So you read through, you find you know, the source that you may be trying to cite. Um, and if you click on it, so let's say in this case you're not citing a journal, but you're instead citing a magazine. Um, then we give you more information, whether you found it directly online, in print, uh, first or online, but originally in print, and so on. And once you're ready, you click the source type that you want, and we direct you to the particular form for that citation. The next piece is what we call Learn and Cite. And so as you're doing your, building, as you're doing your citation, we want to show you where, how different elements of that citation are put together. So as you can see in the box to the right, as we're typing, that citation begins to get created. So authors, uh, titles, um, publication titles, and so on get created live while you're creating that citation. And below each element is a, is a description on what that citation, uh, what that particular element is. We also show you rules in case you have, if you're confused about anything, um, we teach you, you know, what you should be capitalizing versus what you shouldn't be. And so this help is built in as you're beginning to create your citation. Uh, the last piece um, that we've created is what we call the citation guide. And we've noticed that you, know, you can tell someone to put in the title and the author and the publication info, but if they can't find it, then they'll have a tough time entering that information in. So we built these visual guides to demonstrate where exactly should you find the book title, author, uh, publisher, et cetera. And we show both for in print resources um, as well as online resources, um, online database resources, uh, et cetera. Um, and so in this case, you can see a book on Google Docs and where you'd find that publication info. But say you're finished creating a bibliography. We offer you a couple of ways to export. You can save your source to Google Docs. So if you're writing your paper there, you can easily save your bibliography to that paper. You can also print it as a Word doc. <clears throat> so that's what we'll show right now. And what we do is we download that bibliography to your computer. And when you open it up, it opens up in Microsoft Word. And so what you can do at this point is easily copy and paste this into your paper or print it directly. Um, so let's see, it doesn't look like it's coming up, but uh, basically <laughs> what, what, you, what you're not seeing is a word which has opened up your bibliography. Uh, and so in terms of, um, we have a free version of EasyVib which is available to anybody um, that you don't have to pay for. And what you get is MLA 7th edition. But if you want to cite an APA in Chicago, um, you have to be part of our premium services. So for schools we offer that. Um, for a few hundred dollars, you know, for K through 12 schools, a little bit more than that for colleges. But what you can do is you can easily click between APA and Chicago style, and your citation automatically converts into those formats. Other tools you get um, are inline citation features, so you can add footnotes as well as uh, parenthetical citations. So in the case of APA, we support parenthetical citations, and all you do is copy and paste. Uh, those inline citations right into your paper. Um, the, the, the latest piece that we've added, um, and we, haven't, we didn't show this yet, um, is what we call the website uh, credibility checker. And what that is, is we've noticed that the kinds of websites that students cite on EasyBib um, can be of varying quality. And so we thought about different ways to address this concept. And so what we do, we, we looked at all, this, all the websites that we have, and we realized that the top 5,000 websites were cited over 50% of the time on EasyBib. So we worked with uh, different librarians, and we came up with some criteria that students should use to evaluate the quality of websites. And so what we, we went through all those different 5,000 sites and scored them along this criteria. So we'll show you a quick ex example of that. Um, and so uh, if you guys aren't familiar, associated content um, it looks like a great site, but it's actually what we call a content farm, where articles are written 
specifically for the creation of ad revenue. So in this case, when you're citing associated content, we show you that that, that website is not credible. And next to that, there's a link that says learn more. When that link is clicked, we show you what we thought along those different criteria, along with the questions that you can ask yourself um, if you're citing a web resource. <clears throat> so for instance, for author, who's providing information, what do you know about them, are they experts, uh, publishers, you know, is there an affiliation with that publisher, um, do they take responsibility for that content, along with other things like accuracy, completeness, uh, currency, uh, credibility, and then we give you a final evaluation of, of credibility. So with this, you know, we're not able to guide the student in their initial research, but we can certainly give them suggestions when they're finishing up their paper and when they're finishing up their bibliography. So that's the, that's the uh, bibliography side of EasyBib. Um, and Neil's going to take a, um, he's going to demonstrate another aspect of our premium tool called the notebook. So as you guys can imagine, when students are doing their bibliography, they're of course going to have to take notes as they conduct their research. So recently we've developed a, note, a notebook feature. And the notebook feature takes the concept of writing index cards and brings it to life online. So right now you're looking at our digital notebook, and this is the pane where students would start taking their notes. You can double click it, and we open up a form field which allows you to take your notes. Now we've divided the form field in three different ways. We encourage students to quote, which allows them to copy and paste their information. They can comment to make them think about what they're taking notes on. And students can paraphrase, which lets them synthesize their information. So right now, I'm just going to add in some filler information to show you what it looks like. At the bottom, you can associate each note with a particular source. You can add an identifier if you want to point out a particular page or paragraph. You can even click the Organize button to put these notes into different groups, which we'll show you briefly, or add tags and even colors to those notes. And once all that information is there, you click Save Note, and you'll see that that digital note card is created. When you mouse over it, you can see a quick synopsis of that note, and you can even maximize it to see everything all at once. Now, if you can envision, students will obviously continue to create more and more notes as they conduct the research. So we'll do that right now. And as they create these notes, they'll start realizing that certain notes are associated with each other. So in real life, students would start putting these notes into groups together. With EasyWeb, all you do is drag a note on top of another note, and it creates a group. Then you can title the group, in this case, will title the group background. On the left side, you have a list of you of your notes, which give you, gives you a real linear format for understanding your notes. Here you can see all the notes that are part of the background group. And on the list view, we let you disseminate this information along various dimensions. So if you've been using tags, you can then narrow down on the tags of those notes. If you like to figure out the notes by the sources they're associated with, you can click source sending or source sending, and you'll see all the notes that are associated with a particular citation and those notes that aren't associated with citations. And we even let you cut down the notes by how, when they were created. So if you'd like to find the notes that are most recently created, you can click on that and see that in the pane in the middle. Now, of course, as you're taking notes, you're going to start figuring out what your paper is going to be about. And to do that, you're going to have to outline your thoughts on that paper. So on the right, we have a dynamic outline creator. You can add new bullets. All you do is double click to edit the bullet. I'll just call this bullet one. And you can then drag these bullets around. So it gives students a real fluid place where they can start building their concepts for the paper. But of course, you can take these, uh, you can start creating this outline and you'll have to eventually associate the different notes you're taking with the different parts of your paper. So we allow students to drag notes to their outline like this. And so the different parts of the notes you've created are associated with the outline. And this creates a direct paper trail of what, where information is coming from for different parts of your paper. So that, in a, in a nutshell, is our note-taking feature. Um, now recently, we've 
been working on a feature that allows students to take advantage of the wealth of bibliographic data that is cited on EasyBib, and we've called that EasyBib Research. And Darshan right now will show you how that feature works. Great. Um, so like Neil mentioned, um, we have all these students typing in their citations into EasyBib. And these citations are essentially a list of sources around a specific topic, sources that each student has vetted and determined is useful for their project. So we're building a tool that helps you search those citations and really take advantage of you know, the work and the effort that other students have done to make, for, to make your own paper more interesting and more challenging. Uh, so we call that EasyBib Research, and we'll show you a quick demo. This is still a beta product, um, and there's a lot of work we have to do. But what students can do right now, that this is available on the website, and it's free. They can type in their essay topic um, into EasyBib Research. So let's do Catch in the Rye um, again. You click Search, and we pull up results uh, about Catcher in the Rye, and we let students you know, view the titles. They can click on links. They can see who the authors are. They can see who the publishers are, the date published, and so on. And what's really interesting is not only can you drill into specific source types like editorials, um, film, et cetera, on the left, on the right, on the left-hand side. Sorry, um, you can also view how often a specific source has been cited. So in this case, Catch on the Rye was cited three times, and you'll notice the source at the top cited 43 times. We also let you see related sources in that bibliography. So if you're finding a great resource, you can see what other great resources are in that related list. And the reason why we think this is interesting is because when you get into seeing how often something is cited, the quality of the source results, and the other citations in a bibliography, you can start building a really powerful and, and interesting search tool that really takes advantage of all the work and effort that students are putting into their papers. And so um, we're still working on the research engine. Um, there are many aspects that we want to improve. For instance, we want to improve the credibility of the sources that show up. Um, and that's still a work in progress. But you know, we encourage you to check it out and give us your feedback. And the last piece um, of our tool, and what we're showing right now is, is our project page. Um, and, yeah, and what you can do on the, uh, with each project is you can see your bibliography. If you have a notebook, you can see that. <coughs> you can see that. Um, and if you're doing your paper in Google Docs, we also have a built-in link called Paper. And this links your, your bibliography to a new Google document or an existing Google document that you create. And therefore, any time you go back to EasyBib, you can find the, the project that you're working on just by clicking that paper link. Um, from an integration standpoint, we have Google Apps integration. So if you're a school that uses Google Apps, you can add our Google App for free. And what this does is it lets any student who is accessing, let's say, their email, they can quickly click a link and get logged in automatically into EasyBin. We also have an iPhone app and an iPad app with an Android app coming very soon. And this allows students to easily hover over a book barcode. And we snap that barcode, and we find that citation automatically. And for um, publishers or other libraries, or if libraries have card catalogs, we have lots of different integrations via our API and developer page. Um, and so the last piece, we'll, we'll show you a quick demo of something that we haven't launched yet. Um, uh, and then and uh, Neil's going to talk about that quickly, but give us one sec. So this hasn't yet been seen by anyone, so we'd love to get some feedback on it. So we're launching on EasyBib a section that gives students guidance on the best practices of writing a paper. And it's also going to serve as a center for resources for educators to get lesson plans to build around EasyBib, as well as basic writing practices, um, such as understanding plagiarism, understanding website evaluation, et cetera. So right now, we're just opening up that section. And we hope to be live with this on EasyBib in about uh, two weeks or so. So right now, you're looking at the student section. Um, in here, we offer guides on how students can choose a topic, 
um, how they should start their preliminary resources, where they should find sources, etc. And when they click on one of those uh, topics, you can it produces detailed content that helps them understand, in this instance, how to choose a topic. And we also link to various other resources to help students out here. Um, if you go down, um, we'll also include our citation guide. So this section will also allow them to answer any citation-related information um, they might need. So here, this is a guide on the fundamentals of MLA citations, and it teaches students how authors should be formatted, how titles should be formatted, et cetera. And the other big component is the section here for educators, which we'll pull up right now. Um, like we were saying before, the educator section has a number of lesson plans that allow you to teach important parts of research to your students. So right now we've clicked on the avoiding plagiarism lesson plan. Um, if you'd like to teach your students how to avoid plagiarism and also use EasyBib in that particular class, we give you ideas on how to go about doing this. And more importantly, at the bottom, we link this to the Common Core Standards. So it ensures that you're following the new standards that educators are supposed to follow these days in order to have um, effective teaching practices. That sums up EasyBib. Um, in the future, you know, we're building products that will make research more social and also products that allow you to analyze the bibliographic data to understand the topics and sources that your students are citing. And with that, uh, Lorna and Peggy, we can you know, go into Q&A or whatever you'd like. Thank you very much, uh, Darshan. And you know, I know this is a section that uh, Kim takes over with, and I'm going to let her take it. Great. Thank you. I've been taking several questions. Uh, Margaret asks, how do you insert a book review annotation in the APA format? So what you would do to add that annotation, you would, of course, need um, APA selected. Um, we have a review form, which you could click on. And so you could add the review over here. And then there's an Add Annotation button where you can create the annotation for that particular citation. And once all that information is in there, you click Create Citation, and it's added to your bibliography. OK. I see. That's very looks very simple to add that in. And does the site need to be in the database for the credibility checking? Um, yes. So, like I said, we mentioned we we review the top 5,000 sites. If you put in a website that's not in the credibility checker, we still show you the questions that you should answer. So we still say, um, we can, I don't know if you do this, maybe we can try that. Um, we still say, you know, you, you should evaluate these resources yourself, and we show you the questions that you need to ask. So that's what comes up. Okay. So you guide the students through the process. Exactly. OK. And I was kind of confused. Um, is that part of the free service, the web, the credibility checking and yeah, evaluating? So, uh, mm -hmm. so every student will see the credibility evaluation. Um, what's part of premium are the notes that we've taken on those sources. And, and so that's only available in the school edition product. Okay. And is there a trial period for the premium features? I'm sorry, what was that? Is there a trial period for trying the premium features? Yeah, there is. And so um, what you're seeing right now is our school edition page. And that's just, it's, um, it's a link located at the bottom of our website. You can sign up for a free okay. trial. Um, that free trial, we can work with you on what's best. So. 30 days is typical, but if you have a project that all your students are using you know, in, in five weeks or six weeks later, we're happy to work with you on that. Um, and we can also, yeah, and, and, and in terms of um, pricing, you'll see the school size, and it's built off of the number of students per, per school. And so in the case of a school of 250 students, that price is $165 a year. Um, 
and going up from there. You know, if you're a school of 2,000, it's around $400. Um, and then three to 4,000 students, I think, is about five to $600. Okay. That sounds very reasonable. And um, have you thought of using this feature in conjunction with the SWE search and your link? Yeah, so we're pulling up a sweet search right now so we can show you the Yolink um, and sweet search integration and how we are integrated with that as well. And so on, on sweet search, um, and if people aren't familiar with sweet search, it's a, it's a search engine for students uh, created by a friend of ours, uh, Mark Moran. And what he's done is he's created a number, he's, he's found a lot of very credible websites and filtered search results based on those websites. He's also integrated Yolink, um, and Yolink is a product that dives into each different resource and pulls up information about your search keywords within each website. And so what you would do um, for clicking on EasyBib is you would click a specific item on a source, you click the share link on Sweet Search, and that allows you to um, integrate or send that information to many places, including EasyBib. So clicking on EasyBib will then send you to EasyBib, and as you can see, that information is pre-populated <coughs> in our form fields. There's another widget that Mark has also um, worked on us with, and that's called, we, have, it, we call it the Site Widget, which allows any website to easily incorporate citations um, onto their web page. So in this case, we're reading um, the On This Day section of Finding Dulcinea, where the site widget appears that when clicked on, it shows the proper MLA, uh, APA, and Chicago citations. So this information can be copied out, or it can be clicked and saved to EasyBib, which again gets added to the bibliography. And do you have to be logged into EasyBib um, to share work? Um, no. So the the cool thing about EasyBib is we built the product to lower as many barriers as possible to creating citations and then doing stuff with them. So you can just go to EasyBib, build your bibliography. We save your citations for you. Um, if you want to have multiple projects, you have to create an account. But if you simply want to share your, your work with other people, there's a share link that, when clicked on, provides you with a public URL that you can then you know, send to um, your friends or your teacher or whoever. And we're working on a collaborative feature, which allow students to work together on the same bibliography or within the same notebook. And that's what we're working on currently, so that we're hoping will be up before uh, the new year. OK. And um, and what if a K-8 school I lost the question. What if the K-8 school of 1,000 students will use it only for 6th or 8th grades, about 360 students? Is there a way to work that out? Yes. Um, we can, for instance, we can target to a middle school or certain grades. And, and uh, we try to make, you know, we try to um, tell it. There are actually a lot of schools that citations are used in 4th and 5th grade so students can learn about the process, even if they're not doing the research papers. But we're certainly happy to work um, with different schools on their particular needs. And EasyBib can be used outside the United States? Yeah, it's accessible from anywhere. Um, there's a Google Translate widget at the bottom that translates um, the website to whatever language. Um, in terms of citation styles, we currently only offer those those three MLA AP in Chicago. So if the school uses that, there shouldn't be any issues. Okay. And Peggy asks if you could show us a Yolink example. Let's 
So um, when, we, when we were on Sweet Search, um, those paragraphs that were embedded within each result, uh, that was, that's actually a, a Yolink technology that does that. We tried to get the browser plugin working, and for some reason it's not working on our machine. But just to give you an example, um, if you had that plugin and you were on a specific search page, Yolink would, would actually pull out those, you can see those yellow and purple highlights, that's Yolink going to work. And so within that toolbar um, that you'd have in your browser, there would be an icon that looks like that share icon, which when clicked on, um, pulls up a similar window to this that allows you to cite that resource. And are there tutorials to watch and learn, and, um, like for the new iPad app? Uh, yes. So let's see. Um, so there, there's a help. So let's go to the help section first and show those videos. Um, so there's a help section that we have where we've outlined um, tutorials for all the different features on EasyVib. So this is just the, the general EasyVib website. Um, and we have an iPhone and iPad video up. It's actually on YouTube. Um, so if you go there and type in EasyVib um, iPhone, let's see, we'll do it right now. Then you can watch um, the video. I think if we, we can send them that link. Yeah, but we just pasted that link into the chat. Great. And any connection with Deagle? I'm uh, not currently. OK. And somebody else asked, if you upgrade to the paid version, and have easy been turned on in Google Apps for ads, will the ads disappear? Yes. Um, the, all the, the premium version of easy does not have advertising. I mean, we can talk a little bit just to give you guys some clarity around what's free and what's premium. Uh, the free version is ad supported and offers MLA only. Uh, the, the, all the auto citation capabilities are there. You can cite as many sources as you want. That's also free. You can export to Word. That's also free. Um, but the school edition, you get APA style, Chicago style, footnote and parenthetical formatting. Um, you can upload uh, uh, citation files from other databases. So for instance, you can upload an EndNote file or a BibText file to EasyBib. Um, you also get the notebook, and it's advertisement free. Um, we do have some, so we do have some databases that currently uh, integrate with EasyBib um, that are also the, the free version uh, that's available for the free version as well. We'll just pull up a, a list of those. Um, WorldCat, Credo Reference, ABC Clio, um, and IGI Global. If your school is subscribed to, to any of those, um, you will see that <laughs> you can export your citations directly to EasyBib. Great. And have there been any questions that I missed along the way? If, if so, um, please let me know. And how ADA compliant is EasyVib? Um, we generally have alt tags, and we've you know, tried to create our page to be semant semantically readable. Um, I'm sure there are aspects that um, we still need to improve on, um, but we try to do our best to make our forms and our labels um, as uh, simple to understand for uh, those kinds of readers as possible. Are there features in the school edition that are not available in the individual subscription? Um, not really. The one thing that is different is, for instance, um, we have IP authentication for the school edition. So if your school um, has an IP range, we can make sure that everyone within that IP range will get the premium version. That's not really applicable to individuals, so that is one key difference. In the school version, do students need to have an email to log in? And elementary, do they have to be un, um, over the, or can they be under the age of 13? 
Um, in terms of uh, email addresses, we're you are supposed to put in an email address. We don't mind if you um, fake that information. Um, and I, that, in a way, that goes to apply to the, the other question about under 13. Um, we are not, in a way, like there are some legal uh, frameworks around what kinds of things people under the age of 13 can do on a website. Um, and so students need to abide by those particular regulations, or rather institutions need to abide by those particular regulations as well. But we can't, we don't prevent people from signing up. And as far as the trial version lasting, you can work out those details together? Exactly. Um, and then we can, I guess we, we can put the, the sign up link in the live binder if it's not already there. Um, and then anyone can sign up. They can reference this um, webinar. And we can work with them to make sure they get a trial that fits their needs in terms of evaluating the product. Great. And if there are any other questions, please let me know. If you'd like to take the mic, we can also give you the mic. And you can ask Neil and Darshan those questions yourself. And if I've missed any, please let me know. Please type the question in the chat, and I'll be happy to ask those questions as well, in case I've overlooked them as they've gone by, since they go by very quickly. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up for the official show. Uh, we do invite everybody to stay on afterwards. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, say a bit more about study break before we um, officially uh, wind up with our final slides for the day, Neil or Deshaun. Um, <laughs> sure. So study break is a content site. It just has some fun and educational content for students. Um, we've I'm just been playing around with that to see if you know we can get people to like us on Facebook and do stuff like that. Um, it's got some fun stuff on there, um, but we're but we're actually probably going to change Study Break into a more uh, a content site that's more favoring, let's say, educational and or easy web and corporate content. Great. Sounds like there's so many things and um, that you guys offer that are just exciting and I know that I could have used a lot of these when I was working on my um, master's program. <laughs> Thanks, so, we were, we've we been very pleased and I'm happy to come back. I'm going to go ahead and revert to the slides. <clears throat> great. I'm glad you've had some great response and we hope that uh, you'll have continued success. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end the uh, application sharing. And take us back to the whiteboard. Sorry for the delay.
Here we go. Hopefully you're looking at the slide with me that says November 2nd. These are the interviews and the conferences that are going to be happening. Well, that was this week. And then November 14th, Steve's going to be hosting, Steve Hargadon is going to be hosting the 2011 Global Education Conference. And on November 22nd, on Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern. He's going to be interviewing Scott Nine from IDEA on democratic education. And on November 29th on Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific. You can on Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern. Steve will be interviewing Alan Blankstein on improving individual schools. Jim, you seem to be having a, a time lag. Did you want me to move on? Okay, we seem to be having a bit of an issue with uh, Kim and her slides, so I'm just going to help Kim close out the show here uh, with her upcoming sessions. Um, Next Saturday, November the 12th, we'll have the K-12 online conference, so you can get the scoop on the next show. And we're still working on our Title IV, November the 19th. Uh, we're just having a little discussion about organization, so we can't fill that in. There'll be no show on uh, Saturday, November the 26th, because of Thanksgiving, holiday in the U.S. And December 3rd, we have Julie Ramsey, a fifth grade teacher and author, and can we skip lunch and keep working? December the 10th, we have Zoe Brannigan Pipe and the Live Scribe Pen. And to round off the end of the year, we have the Unplugged.ca uh, group with Rod Lucier, Ben Hazard, Tom Fulch, and Alex Curso, and Zoe Brannigan Pipe, some of the planning committee. So we're looking for some great shows coming up uh, at the end of the session. When you um, close out your browser, you're going to get a link to our survey. So. Um, don't be afraid of that pop-up window, but please fill in, fill in any suggestions or comments you have for the show because we're always looking for new ideas and how we can support your learning even better. So we have a YouTube channel. Oh, this is the participation survey. Everyone uh, can access the survey using the link for the survey. I'm repeating myself and not right on, not being sharp here. Professional development certificates are available, and you can find a place to register by clicking on the, uh, our survey at the end of the show, and there's a place for you to fill in your information so we can send it. And if you don't receive one, please mail us at live at classroom20.com faithfully every week. Thank you very much, Peggy. She takes an extra step, extra effort here, and sends out those professional development certificates to you. I was going to talk about the iTunes channel earlier, so here we are. We do have an iTunes channel. It's tinyurl.com, CR20Live iTunes U is the link that we're using. And you have two collections going that you can put on your um, iPod, iPad, iPad with uh, either the video or the audio for the session. So it's a great tool to be able to catch up on what you missed. Special thanks to our uh, guest today, Darshan Samasikar and Neil Taparia. We are very appreciative of you taking the time to show us 
easy bib. I know a lot of good information for people to grab onto and think at the after the session. Of course, we always thank Steve Harkin, who is the founder of Classroom 20, Teacher 20, and Teacher of Education for starting this session, this uh, series. And everyone who is here today for uh, asking their questions and making their comments, thank you very much. And we thank Blackboard Collaborate for their support of this webcast. I think that's closing out the session. Now, if there's more questions, can you um, pop them in the chat or come to the mic? Just recognize that Darshan and Neil, how is your time for staying? Um, we have about uh, 10 to 10 minutes or so. Um, okay. So we have to, take, to take questions on. All right. So, live binders link, please share in what's said. If there's any more questions in the chat, just type your um, question here, and I'll try and keep on track. And there's a live binders link. Again, it's very, very helpful for uh, whizzing back and forth between the different options that you're uh, able to use. And I guess that um, free trial subscription page is on a link, or we will put it as a link into the live binders. So. Are there any more questions for our guests? Darshan and Neil, did you want to add anything else that um, the last words you might like to use at the end of the session? Um, no, thanks everyone for coming and attending. And you know, if you have any feedback for us, feel free to contact us um, off the website. Or um, if you look, if you like a free trial, you, know, you can click on that school edition page. Or if you just want to use a free version of EasyVib, we'd happy to. We'll, we'll be very happy to have you uh, using our website. Spreading the word. Thank you. Thank you. If something comes up in the survey, Neil and Darshan will be happy to forward it to you. So I don't see any other questions for you. I'll give one, one more last shout out here. If you have any more questions, just type into the chat. Doesn't look like we do. Oh, here Becky has a question. Do you give free trials or premium for people who aren't in schools? Uh, yes, so our individual product is called MyBib Pro. Um, that's also a link that you'll see in the footer of our webpage. Uh, the free trial there is, is for three days. If you'd like a longer one, um, just contact us and we can set that up for you. Okay. Well, I'm going to say thank you very much, Darshan and Neil, for being with us. I'm sorry for messing up your last name's pronunciation. Um, People mess up Constantine a lot as well, so I'm right there in the group. <laughs> thank you very, thank you everyone for being with us today. It's been a pleasure as always to see the room uh, fill up. So some interested and faithful followers and people looking for new information. So thank you very much, Neil and Darshan. Everyone have a great weekend, and um, we'll see you at the same time next week. Sounds good. Thanks, Laura. Thanks, Peggy. <clears throat> Thanks, everyone.